what do you see in trachoma everything about trachoma you have to be 100 percent sure doctor there can be an entropion not ectropion then pinicula uh, not pinicula uh, entropion corneal opacity a dry eye they are all the features of the trachoma then what is pinicula so it typically occurs because of certain environmental irritants like ultraviolet light exposure, aging, etc. can lead to the development of uh, the uh, pinicule. Now, what is the treatment of choice? Whenever there is a newborn child with cataract, a newborn, you are a pediatric ophthalmologist, super special subspeciality in ophthalmology how do you want to treat the newborn cataract you can do pars plana lensectomy extracapsular cataract extraction vitreectomy aspiration but you don't do intracapsular cataract extraction for the management of a newborn's cataract is what you have to basically remember that's right some of you might have finished ophthalmology very fresh in that so ophthalmology psychiatry anesthesia dermatology 10 out of 10 highly scoring subjects if you read if you don't read 0 by 10 i can guarantee you because we don't we can't even use common sense in these subjects right so that is a whole challenge so when to operate cataract in a pediatric patient if it is a bilateral dense cataract it requires a very early surgery at around four to six weeks of age otherwise it lead to a stimulus deprivation amblyopia so that is the reason we need to operate it within four to six weeks if it is bilateral dense cataract if it is a bilateral partial cataract then it may not require the surgery immediately in the pediatric age group it can be done later date if it is a unilateral dense cataract then also urgent surgery is advised within days and uh, a very aggressive anti amblyopia therapy should be initiated and uh, typically it is detected after 16 weeks of age then the surgery is inadvisable because even if you do surgery, if you detect a unilateral dense cataract, already the amblyopia that is being developed is very refractory in nature. So that's the reason you can't do much. So much is importance of examining a newborn's vision to identify any of these visual defects. And uh, if it is a partial cataract, unilateral, then you can treat it non-surgically is what need to be remembered. So what is pars plana lensectomy? There is a pupillary area right which is a like an entry into the guha. So entire lens within the pupillary area that is the anterior capsule, anterior cortex, nucleus, posterior cortex and posterior capsule they are all removed is what need to be remembered. Now comes phaco emulsification very happy to see 216 uh, online uh, students 222 somebody promised to bring 500 students yesterday what happened to that promise right now phaco emulsification what is the thing that is involved phaco is lens lens ko emulsify karke bahar thing do when will you do that if there is any um, cataract. So you do hydro dissection, then hydro delineation, a curvilinear capsular in incision which is continuous, then you place an IOL, you also do an aspiration of the lens matter, then all the part of the phaco emulsification is what you need to remember. So there is a incision done into the sclera, you remove the lens nucleus, and then you implant 
a new lens, IOL. Then you can also do a uh, laser assisted incision, capillary excess and initial lens fragmentation and ultrasonic emulsification is also possible. So ultimately lens nikal ke lens dalna. That is going to be the core job as an ophthalmologist day in and day out. So if you look at the various steps of the FACO emulsification with intraocular lens implantation, what are the series of steps? You do give an exposure, do irrigation, do paracentesis, then you do a scleral tunnel incision, then you do a corneal incision and then you do a curvilinear capsulectomy, capsulorexis, then hydrodissection, hydrolineation, nuclear rotation and FACO emulsification is what you will ultimately do to liquefy the lens and extract it out. Now comes the question, how do you treat the nasolacrimal obstruction which is one of the very very common clinical scenario. Syringing, probing, dacryocysterinostomy, dacryocystectomy and antibiotics all of them are implicated in treating the nasolacrimal obstruction. So how does it clinically look like doctor when the nasolacrimal duct in a newborn baby it can also undergo an obstruction so it can present like along the medial canthus like a swelling is what uh, you typically come across. Now what are all the things which are associated with diabetic retinopathy and diabetes? All of them, heart exudates, neovascularization, glaucoma, cataract, retinal detachment, any of them are associated with diabetes. Once more you can see, hard exudates, soft exudates. If you happen to go to the entrance exam without knowing what is hard exudate, soft exudate, that means you are in a very amoebic phase of your preparation. Suppose you came across hard exudate, soft exudate uh, question and started, uh, wow, what a tough paper. That means you did not prepare at all for entrance. So doctor, if you are well prepared with 650 high yield topics, play as many quizzes as possible on the UMedico app. 8 by 10 score in every topic you should achieve and walk out of that. If you achieve in all 650 topics, it is impossible for anyone to stop you from being in the top 200. A lot of people say, hey, yeah, results are about tension, are tension, are kya tension, hai? results kiska are, aap jo perform kiye the, uske upar result are. You yourself know that how, how good you have done. There is a question of saying that, arre, time sufficient nahi hua, arre, maine, uska answer soch ki iska lagaya. There is no such thing, doctor. We are just justifying. If you read 650 topics, if you happen to solve all the question banks, it takes not more than three to 400 hours of your time. That's all is required for entrance preparation. There is no running here and there. Let me tell you honestly, right? So still there is about 65, 70 days time is there. Lot of time doctor, 70 into 8, 560 hours of time is there. Even if you read 8 or 9 hours a day also, 600 hours time is still there before January 6th. You can win the world and come back, right? That's what I want all of you to be. Hard exudates where you don't see is a very important question. We see in hypertension, diabetes, SLE, coats. So you already know what are the reasons for the soft and hard, which is due to pericapillary edema and which is because of infarction, micro infarction of the narrow fiber layer, which we discussed in the last yesterday's class. Yesterday's class is already uploaded into the video library under bullet classes. In the UMedico app, you can always go through that. Um, so if you are part of the, if you are already subscribed to the UMedico video library. Now, retinal detachment. What are the important features of the retinal detachment? Retinal detachment can lead to field defect, 
they can be retinal tears or need not be if the tears are there what type without tears what type exudative don't have tear regmatogenous has got tear right now grayish brown fundus uh, then defective vision they are all the things associated vitreous hemorrhage is not always needed to be there only vitreous hemorrhage leading to fibrosis of the vitreous leading to fractional retinal detachment only in that location you need to think about vitreous hemorrhage so this is that grayish brown fundus appearance of the fundus grayish brown fundus which you see in the case of the retinal detachment is what you have to basically remember